Dark Elf's Chosen Season 2, Episode 3, by Celeste King. Last time on Dark Elf's Chosen. We need to keep moving. My magic, it's out of control. There has to be another way out. I'm pregnant. If you're tired of you two putting a pause on the spicy scenes or simply don't want to wait for the next episode to drop, go to worldsofprotheca.com. With code YouTube30, you can get 30% off of Dark Elf's Chosen Seasons 1 and 2, or buy them as a bundle at an incredible discount. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for notifications on our daily free audiobook releases. And let us know what you think of this story in the comments. This is Celeste King's Season 2 of Dark Elf's Chosen. Chapter 15 Julius The road stretches before us, an endless ribbon of dirt and uncertainty. Savannah walks ahead, her red hair a beacon against the dull landscape. Rasdin's bulk follows her, each step deliberate. Ronica lingers close to me, her eyes darting around as if she expects danger to spring from the shadows. Savannah stops and looks back at us. Are you two coming or what? I quicken my pace, forcing a smile. Right behind you. Her eyes linger on mine, searching for something I can't give her right now. Reassurance, maybe. But how can I reassure her when my own magic betrays me? Each step feels heavier than the last, my limbs protesting every movement. Rasdin moves closer to Savannah, his presence a silent promise of protection. His green eyes meet mine for a brief moment, and I nod in thanks. At least someone here can still wield their power. Ronica's voice pulls me back from my thoughts. You're worried about her. She's everything, I say too quickly. I just wish... You wish you could protect her, Ronica finishes for me. Yeah. My voice cracks, the weight of my own inadequacy pressing down on me. The road twists and turns through a forest now, the trees closing in around us like sentinels. The sound of the rustle of leaves in the breeze is the only thing filling our silence as we walk. Savannah stops again, this time turning fully to face me. Julius, are you okay? You look... Tired, I cut in, forcing another smile. Just tired. She frowns but doesn't push it. Instead, she reaches out and squeezes my hand, her touch sending warmth through my cold veins. We'll get through this, she says softly. Yeah, I whisper back. We will. But even as I say it, doubt gnaws at me. What if Ronica's prediction comes true? What if I can't protect her when it matters most? My mind races with possibilities, each one darker than the last. Rasdin breaks the tension with a grunt. Let's keep moving. We need to reach the city before nightfall. We resume our trek, but the air feels heavier now, charged with unspoken fears and unfulfilled promises. Each step takes us further into the unknown, and all I can do is hope that when danger strikes, and it will, I'll find the strength somewhere within myself to keep Savannah safe. The city walls loom ahead, their shadows stretching across the path. Savannah glances back, her eyes bright with anticipation. But my gut tightens as we approach a roadblock. A dozen armed dark elf soldiers stand in formation, their armor gleaming menacingly under the sun. Savannah slows her pace, her excitement replaced by caution. What's going on? Stay close, I murmur, stepping ahead of her. Rasdin and Ronica fall into place behind us, forming a protective barrier. The leader of the soldiers steps forward, his eyes cold and calculating. He sizes us up, a smirk curling his lips. Travelers, huh? You'll need to hand over all your money in that girl. He points at Savannah, his gaze predatory. My blood runs cold. She's not going anywhere. The leader's smirk widens. You misunderstand. It wasn't a request. Savannah grips my arm, her nails digging into my skin. I glare at the leader. You're not taking her. Rasdin steps forward, his massive frame casting a shadow over the soldiers. You heard him. Back off. The soldiers tense, their hands moving to their weapons. 
The air crackles with impending violence. Last chance, the leader says, his voice dripping with arrogance. Hand her over or face the consequences. Savannah's grip tightens further. I can feel her fear, but also her resolve. Never, I say through gritted teeth. The leader sighs dramatically and waves his hand. Seize them. In an instant, the soldiers move towards us, weapons drawn. Razdan lets out a roar and charges forward, his fists swinging like battering rams. Ronica steps back, staying close to Savannah. Stay behind me, I tell Savannah as I try to summon my magic. A weak flame sputters in my palm before flickering out. Damn it, I curse under my breath. Savannah looks at me with wide eyes but says nothing. Rasdan plows through two soldiers with ease while Ronica stays by my side. We fend off the incoming attacks as best as we can, but more soldiers close in, their faces set in grim determination. There's twelve of them and four of us, and not all of us are at full strength. We have to find a way out, I shout to Rasdan over the clash of steel. I'm open to suggestions. He grunts back, throwing another soldier aside. My mind races as I scan our surroundings for any possible escape route. Savannah's safety is all that matters now. The fight intensifies around us as chaos erupts on the path leading to the city gates. I stretch out my hand, fingers trembling, and attempt to conjure a fire spell. The familiar warmth should surge through my veins, ignite in my palm, but instead only wisps of smoke drift upward and vanish into the air. Panic grips me. Come on, I mutter through clenched teeth. Not now. The soldiers press in, swords glinting menacingly. Razdin battles valiantly, but he can't hold them off alone. I try again, desperation clawing at my insides. More smoke, nothing more. Savannah's eyes lock onto mine, fear and confusion swirling within them. She depends on me, and here I am, powerless. Julius! She cries out as a dark elf lunges at me, blade aimed for my heart. In a heartbeat, Rasdin leaps in front of me, intercepting the blow with his massive forearm. The blade cuts deep into his flesh, but he doesn't falter. With a roar that shakes the very ground, he swings his other arm and sends the attacker sprawling. Stay behind me! Rasdin growls, his voice thick with pain yet unwavering. I stagger back, heart pounding in my ears. My magic, my very essence, fails me when I need it most. The weight of my inadequacy crashes down like a tidal wave. Savannah clings to me, her presence both a comfort and a cruel reminder of what I should be able to do. Rasdin's roars reverberate through the chaos, a battle cry that shakes the very air. His fists are relentless, smashing through armor and bone alike. I grip my sword tighter, my fingers slick with sweat. A soldier lunges at me, his blade glinting in the sunlight. I parry, barely deflecting the blow and counter with a swift strike to his side. He stumbles back, clutching his wound. Another soldier takes his place and I force myself to focus, to ignore the growing fatigue in my limbs. I glance over my shoulder to see Savannah fending off an attacker with a dagger. Her movements are quick but uncertain. She shouldn't have to fight, she shouldn't be here. Stay close, I shout back, slashing at another dark elf who tries to flank me. Razdin barrels through two more soldiers, but they keep coming, undeterred by their fallen comrades. The leader of the group sneers at us from behind his lines, confident in our impending defeat. We need to break through, Razdin growls, barely audible over the clashing steel. I nod and tighten my grip on my sword. On my mark. Savannah's eyes meet mine for a brief moment, trust and fear mingling in their depths. She nods resolutely. No, I shout. We surge forward as one, Rasdin leading the charge with brute force, Ronica staying close to us, and Savannah at my side. My blade dances through the air, cutting down anyone who dares get too close. But there are too many of them. For every soldier we take down, two more seem to take their place. My breath comes in ragged gasps as exhaustion creeps into my muscles. A dark elf swings at me from behind. 
I barely have time to react before Rasdin intercepts him with a crushing blow. I'm forced back against the wall of bodies and blades, their numbers overwhelming our dwindling strength. Chapter 16 Savannah The air smells of sweat and iron as we clash with the dark elves. Julius's movements are slower than usual, and I can see the strain on his face. Rasdin swings his axe, its blade catching the light as it arcs through the air. He roars, driving back another attacker. Get behind me, Savannah! Julius shouts, flames sputtering from his palms. I duck as a sword whistles past my ear. Not a chance! I snap back, my voice shaking but resolute. Ranica stands behind us, her eyes wide as she clutches a small dagger, clearly terrified but resolute. The leader remains untouched, his sneer cutting through the chaos. You think you can stand against me? His voice drips with contempt. Pathetic! Julius lunges forward but stumbles, catching himself at the last moment. The leader's eyes narrow as he realises Julius's weakness. Your magic is useless. He laughs loudly, preparing to strike. As I duck the attack, my mind spins in a whirlwind of confusion and disbelief. What does he mean Julius's magic is useless? Julius is renowned as one of the strongest firewielders in existence. The thought gnaws at me as I struggle to comprehend the leader's brazen confidence. Razdin charges forward his massive, red-furred frame a protective barrier for Julius. His green eyes blaze with determination. But the leader, faster than lightning, parries effortlessly. Razdin is sent reeling backward, crashing into the ground with a force that shakes the earth beneath us. A dark elf lunges at me, blade gleaming wickedly in the sun. I dodge to the side, heart pounding. Razdin's roar echoes behind me as he fights off another attacker his axe a whirlwind of deadly force. Ranica stands firm, clutching her dagger tightly, her knuckles white. Savannah, watch out! Rastin shouts between swings. I barely turn in time to block an incoming strike with a hastily raised dagger. The impact reverberates through my arm, leaving it numb. My breath comes in short gasps as I fend off another attack. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Julius standing still his face pale and strained, a stark contrast to his usual fiery demeanour. The battlefield rages around him, but he remains motionless, eyes unfocused. Panic tightens its grip on me as a wave of fear crashes over me. Something's wrong, terribly wrong. Julius! I scream, my voice barely cutting through the cacophony of battle. Snap out of it! Desperation laces my words, as I hope to awaken the fierce warrior within him. He meets my gaze for a brief moment, eyes filled with anguish and frustration. Flames sputter weakly from his palms before fizzling out completely. My heart sinks as I see his strength faltering. The leader notices too, a cruel smile spreading across his face. He can't protect you, human, he sneers, advancing toward me with deliberate steps his voice dripping with malice. Each step he takes feels like the ground is quaking beneath me, amplifying my terror. Panic surges within me as the dark elves close in, their faces twisted into cruel masks of intent. My heart races and I can feel my magic flaring inside me like a caged beast, desperate to break free. But the fear clamps down on my ability to direct it, making my hands tremble and my mind scatter. The air grows thicker with each step they take, suffocating me with the weight of impending doom. I try to focus, to harness the power that I know is there, but it's like trying to grasp smoke. The leader's blade slashes toward me, and I brace for impact. Rasdin's bellow of rage reaches my ears, just as his massive form barrels into the fray, knocking the leader aside with brute force. Ranica steps closer to Julius, trying to support him as best she can, her face etched with worry. It's too late for me. I'm surrounded by three of them. Razdin took out another and is fighting two with powerful blows from his axe. No, I say, mostly to myself, panting. 
this is not how it ends. The leader's blade arcs toward me, but before it connects, the world blurs. In an instant, I'm twenty feet away, the familiar tug of teleportation magic pulling at my core. After a moment of concentration, I reappear behind them, the sand shifting under my feet. They whirl around, eyes wide with surprise. Miss me? I smirk, though my heart races. I summon my magic and thrust my hands forward. A blast of energy surges out, knocking one dark elf off his feet. The other two charge at me. I barely dodge their strikes, teleporting again to evade them. Over here, I taunt from a new spot, my voice breathless. Razdin roars and swings his axe, cleaving through another elf. He nods at me, sweat gleaming on his red fur. Keep moving, he bellows. I nod and focus on staying light on my feet. Another burst of magic sends one of the elves sprawling. Ranica moves closer to Julius, her presence a silent but steady support. The ground beneath us trembles slightly with her efforts to stay calm. The remaining dark elf lunges at me, his blade glinting menacingly. I teleport again, reappearing behind him just in time. My magic crackles at my fingertips, and I send another blast his way. The spell isn't perfect, far from it, but it keeps him off balance, forcing him to stumble. Razdin barrels into the fray once more, his massive axe a blur of motion. He fights like a demon possessed, each swing precise and deadly, cleaving through the chaos with terrifying efficiency. Keep it up, he shouts over his shoulder, his voice a mix of command and encouragement. Ranica stays near Julius, her eyes filled with concern as she watches us fight off the Dark Elves. We continue our desperate dance around the battlefield, me teleporting and blasting away threats with whatever magic I can muster, Razdin cleaving through enemies with raw, unrelenting power. It's chaotic and messy, the air thick with tension and the scent of blood, but somehow we manage to hold our ground. I can feel the adrenaline surging through me, my heart pounding as I dodge attacks and retaliate. Every moment is a blur of motion and magic, yet we fight on, refusing to give an inch. Finally, only the leader remains standing. He snarls in frustration as he realises he's alone against us. With one powerful blow from Razdin, he joins the others on the floor, unconscious. I breathe heavily, my heart still pounding from the fight. The adrenaline slowly ebbs away, leaving me shaky but triumphant. The dark elves lie scattered around us, some groaning in pain, others unmoving. I look up and my gaze locks onto Julius. He's staring at me, his eyes wide and filled with something I can't quite place. Shock. Fear. Recognition. My stomach churns. Oh damn, he saw that. His lips part as if to speak but no words come out. The silence between us stretches, taut and heavy. I feel exposed, vulnerable under his scrutiny. Before either of us can address it, Razdin's gruff voice cuts through the tension. We need to get away from here, he says, wiping sweat from his brow. Julius tears his gaze away from me and nods slowly, still looking dazed. Razdin motions for us to follow him, his expression urgent. I swallow hard and move to Julius's side, touching his arm lightly. Come on, I whisper, my voice trembling slightly. He looks at me again, and I can't read his expression. But he doesn't say anything, just nods again and lets me guide him away from the battlefield. Ranica joins us, her eyes still filled with concern. Let's find shelter, she murmurs, her voice gentle but firm. We walk away from the scene in silence, each of us lost in our own thoughts. The weight of what just happened hangs heavy in the air between us. As we move further from the chaos and closer to safety, I steal a glance at Julius. He looks exhausted but determined. I can see he's wrestling with what he saw, what I did. But now isn't the time to delve into it. For now, all that matters is getting somewhere safe where we can regroup and figure out our next steps. Chapter 17 Julius 
Savannah and I sit by the fire, the orange glow dancing on her face. Rosdin and Ronica are a few feet away, both already fast asleep. My mind replays the battle, her sudden disappearance and reappearance behind our attackers. How did she teleport? And why didn't she tell me? I glance at her, trying to find any hint of the magic she used. But all I see is her usual, calm expression, a soft smile as she stares into the fire. Savannah leans back on her hands, gazing up at the stars. The firelight highlights the curve of her cheek, and I can't help but be drawn to her. I want to ask about what I saw today. The questions burn in my throat like acid. But then she turns to me, her eyes sparkling with warmth, and my resolve melts away. It's been a while since we've had a clear night like this, she says. Yeah, I murmur. We lay our blankets by the fire, shadows dancing around us. Savannah nestles close, her head on my shoulder, red curls tickling my neck. I wrap an arm around her waist, drawing her nearer, her warmth soothing against me. The night is quiet, save for rustling leaves and popping embers. Her presence comforts my troubled mind. Today was... intense, she whispers. That's an understatement, I chuckle softly. She laughs too, the sound like music in the quiet night. Despite everything, her secrets, my failing magic, this moment feels perfect. Her laughter fills my chest with warmth, pushing away the cold reality of our struggles. I decide not to push for answers tonight. They can wait. Right now, holding her close feels more important than any explanation. I pull Savannah closer, feeling the steady rhythm of her breath against my chest. The warmth of the fire contrasts with the cool night air, creating a cocoon of comfort around us. So, I say, my voice barely above a whisper, where do you want to go next? She tilts her head up, eyes gleaming with excitement. I've heard Tlaus has beautiful crystal caves. They say the light refracts in a thousand colors. Sounds magical, I reply, running my fingers through her hair. And Leandor has those floating gardens. Remember how we always talked about seeing them? Her smile widens. Yes, I almost forgot about that. Imagine walking through the air, surrounded by flowers. We could do both, I suggest, trying to keep my tone light. Take our time and explore everything. She nods eagerly. And what about Kainvu? There's that ancient library you mentioned once. Right. I say, my mind drifting to dusty tomes and hidden knowledge. I could lose myself in those books for days. She giggles softly. You would. But we'd have to drag you out eventually. Only if you promise to let me go back, I tease, winking at her. Her laughter fills the night again, and for a moment it feels like we're back to how we used to be, carefree and in sync. And what about you? She asks, poking my side playfully. Any must-see places on your list? I pretend to think for a moment. Hmm. How about a secluded beach where we can just relax? No battles, no magic, just us and the waves. She sighs contentedly. That sounds perfect. We fall into a comfortable silence, each lost in thoughts of future adventures. It's easy to pretend everything is fine when we're wrapped up like this, planning trips and dreaming together. So, Savannah says after a while, favorite sight so far? I don't hesitate. You? She rolls her eyes but can't hide her blush. Be serious. I am serious, I insist, kissing her forehead. But if you mean places, I'd say that waterfall we found in northern Cane Vu. That was breathtaking, she agrees. And the sunset over the desert? Unforgettable. Absolutely, I say, feeling a genuine smile spread across my face. Savannah shifts, her fingers tracing idle patterns on my chest. Do you remember our first trip together? She asks softly. How could I forget? I say, brushing a stray curl from her face. You insisted on climbing that mountain despite the storm. Her eyes twinkle with mischief. And you thought I was crazy. I still do. I laugh, but it was worth it. 
She tilts her head, her lips curving into a teasing smile. Even when we got lost? Especially then, I reply, my voice dropping to a whisper. Her breath hitches as our gazes lock. The fire's glow dances in her eyes, drawing me in. My hand cups her cheek, thumb brushing over her soft skin. Julius, she breathes, leaning into my touch. I close the distance between us, capturing her lips in a tender kiss. She responds eagerly, her fingers tangling in my hair as she pulls me closer. The world around us fades away, leaving only the heat of our connection and the crackling of the fire. Our kisses deepen, growing more urgent. Savannah's hands roam over my back and I shiver at her touch. My own hands explore her curves, memorizing every inch of her. Her breath mingles with mine, a shared warmth that ignites something primal within me. She whispers my name in a way that sends a thrill down my spine, and I can feel the boundaries between us dissolving. I press her closer, my fingers tracing patterns on her skin as if committing her to memory. Each touch, each caress, speaks of a longing that words cannot capture. I break the kiss, only to trail my lips down her neck, tasting the salt of her sweat and the sweetness of her skin. Her soft moans are music to my ears, and I am lost in the symphony of our shared desire. I spare a quick glance to the other side of the fire, confirming that Ronica and Rosdin are still asleep. Rosdin's soft snores reach me, and I can see Ronica twitch slightly in her sleep. I watch her for a moment longer, only satisfied when I see her chest rising and falling in deep, even breaths. I turn back to Savannah and pull her closer, kissing her passionately. I feel her shiver as it passes through her and into me, and I have to hold back a groan when she arches against me. Savannah pulls back just enough to catch her breath, her eyes dark with desire. I need you, she whispers, voice trembling but you'll need to get the rest of this scene from worldsofprothika.com because YouTube just isn't having it. I know. I hate to ruin the mood. But guidelines are guidelines, and the uncut, ad-free version of this episode is there for the taking. Use discount code YouTube30 to get 30% off of episode 3. Hell, get 30% off the whole season and any other digital product on the site. Now where were we? Orcs, gargoyles, vampires, ice monsters, demons of the dark. These beasts seek war, destruction, and power. But there's only one thing that can tame them. Love. This is your chance to get the uncut and unabridged audiobook bundle. No detail is spared. Use discount code YouTube30 for an additional 30% off of the already discounted price. Go to worldsofprathika.com. Get access to countless audiobooks and discounted bundles where I talk you through every last scene. Prothika's magic is eternal. Audio bundles will make it immersive. Chapter 18 Savannah Julius stirs beside me his eyes fluttering open. He looks at me, a soft smile spreading across his face. Morning, he murmurs, his voice still husky with sleep. Morning, I reply, brushing a lock of hair from his forehead. We linger for a moment longer, then slowly disentangle ourselves and start packing up. Julius moves with a grace that belies his size, every motion deliberate. I catch him glancing at me as he pulls on his boots, and my heart skips a beat. Ranika and Rasdan are already up, packing the last of our supplies. The Minotaur grunts in acknowledgement as we approach, while Ranika gives me a knowing smile. Sleep well? she asks. As well as one can in the wild, I reply. Julius snorts. Savannah could sleep on a bed of nails and wake up cheerful. I roll my eyes but can't suppress a grin. We pack up our belongings in comfortable silence, the occasional glance exchanged between Julius and me, enough to keep my spirits high. As we set off towards the next town, the morning sun casts long shadows across the path. 
Julius walks beside me, close enough that our arms occasionally brush. Each touch sends a shiver down my spine. What's the first thing you'll do when we get there? I ask him. Find an inn with an actual bed, he says without missing a beat. You? I laugh. Probably find some local sweets to try. He chuckles. You and your sweet tooth. The road ahead seems less daunting with him by my side. We pass fields of wildflowers and distant hills shrouded in mist, the beauty of the world around us almost making me forget our troubles. Almost. Every so often, Julius squeezes my hand or nudges me playfully with his shoulder. Each small gesture reassures me that despite everything we've faced, and are still facing, we're in this together. We walk into the next city just as the sun reaches its zenith. The streets bustle with life, merchants shouting their wares, children darting between stalls, and the tantalising scent of roasting meat filling the air. Julius and I share a brief smile. It feels good to be among people again, to feel some semblance of normalcy. Let's find that in first, Julius says, squeezing my hand. We weave through the crowd, Ranica and Razdin trailing behind us. My eyes scan the colourful awnings and shop fronts, already plotting which sweets to sample. But my heart races as we turn a corner and come face to face with a group of Minotaur soldiers. They stand in a tight formation, their eyes fixed on us. The lead minotaur steps forward, his red fur contrasting sharply with his dark armour. Halt, he commands. Julius stiffens beside me, his hand instinctively reaching for the hilt of his sword. I mirror his movement, my fingers twitching with the urge to summon my magic. The air thickens with tension, and the bustling marketplace seems to fade into the background. What is the meaning of this? Julius demands, his voice a low growl. The lead minotaur's eyes flick to Razdin. I glance back at our companion, expecting him to back us up, but my heart plummets as he steps away from us. His expression is grim, almost resigned. Razdin, I whisper, confusion and betrayal lacing my words. Razdin doesn't meet my eyes. I'm sorry, he says his voice heavy. I had no choice. No choice? Julius's voice trembles with barely contained fury. You sold us out. The lead minotaur nods approvingly at Razdin. Your cooperation will be noted, he says, before turning his attention back to us. Hand over your weapons and come quietly. Julius's grip on his sword tightens, flames flickering at his fingertips despite his weakened state. I don't think so. I feel my magic surge within me, ready to teleport us out of here if necessary. But my heart aches as I look at Razdin, who now stands with the soldiers. He was supposed to be our ally, our friend. You did this to lift your banishment, I say softly, realisation dawning on me. Razdin finally meets my gaze, guilt and sorrow etched into his features. I couldn't stay away from Milthar forever. Julius lets out a bitter laugh. And what about loyalty? What about honour? Rastin flinches but doesn't respond. The soldiers move closer, their weapons gleaming menacingly in the sunlight. The lead minotaur's eyes narrow as he focuses on me. We want the humans, he says, his voice cold and final. What? I gasp, stepping back instinctively. Why? Experiments? Slaves? He replies with a chilling smile. Whatever we want, and you won't be stopping us. Julius steps forward, pulling a sword out instead. You'll have to get through me first. Two soldiers lunge at me, and I try to dodge them, but my magic doesn't respond. Panic seizes my chest as I stumble back, desperately attempting to teleport away. Nothing happens. Julius! I cry out, my voice cracking. He swings his sword in a wide arc, forcing the soldiers to retreat momentarily. Run, Savannah! He shouts, though his eyes betray his own fear. Ranica stands beside me, her face pale but determined. We have to move, she says urgently. Another soldier grabs for me, and I twist away, 
my heart pounding in my ears. I will my magic to activate again, but it's like trying to catch smoke with bare hands, impossible and futile. Ranika pulls me towards an alleyway, but the soldiers are faster. One of them catches my arm in a vice-like grip. Pain shoots through my shoulder as I struggle against him. Let her go! Julius roars, sending a weak fireball towards us. It fizzles out before reaching the soldier. One of the other Minotaur wrenches his weapon from his hands, leaving him with nothing. The lead Minotaur sneers. Your magic is as weak as your resolve. Ranika tries to pry the soldier's hand off me, her nails digging into his flesh. He barely flinches. Desperation claws at me. I look at Julius, who is now grappling with another soldier. His strength is waning visibly. Even from this distance I can see the strain on his face. Please, I beg the soldier holding me. Don't do this. He ignores my plea and tightens his grip until it feels like my bones will snap. Ranika's efforts become more frantic as she kicks and punches at him with all her might. In that moment of chaos and helplessness, a terrible realisation washes over me. Without my magic, without Julius at full strength, we might not escape this. Another minotaur steps forward to assist in subduing us. The crowd in the marketplace parts nervously around us, their curious eyes watching our struggle with detached interest. I catch a glimpse of Razdin standing aside, guilt etched into every line of his face, but doing nothing to intervene. Panic claws at my chest, my breath coming in ragged gasps, the grip on my arm tightens, and I can't think straight. Julius, please do something. Let her go, Julius bellows again, desperation tinging his voice. He thrusts his hand out, flames flickering weakly before sputtering out. The lead minotaur's laughter echoes around us, cruel and mocking. Pathetic, he sneers. Is that the best you can do? Julius's eyes meet mine, wide with fear and helplessness. He tries again, summoning every ounce of strength he has left. But nothing happens. No flames, no heat, just emptiness. We're screwed, I whisper, my voice trembling. Tears sting my eyes as the realisation hits me like a tidal wave. We're not getting out of this. Ranika's frantic efforts to free me are futile. The soldier holding me doesn't even flinch as she kicks and scratches at him. My magic remains stubbornly dormant, as if mocking me in our darkest hour. Julius's shoulders slump in defeat, the fire in his eyes dimming. Savannah! He chokes out, his voice breaking. The lead minotaur steps closer, a satisfied grin spreading across his face. Take them, he commands his soldiers. Another set of hands grabs me from behind, and I struggle weakly, my strength all but gone. Julius lunges forward, but he's quickly overpowered by two minotaur who force him to the ground. Don't hurt him, I scream, thrashing against my captors. My heart aches as I watch Julius being subdued, his face twisted in pain and frustration. Silence! The lead minotaur snaps, striking me across the face with a gauntleted hand. Stars explode behind my eyes, and I taste blood on my lips. Ranika cries out in protest, but is swiftly silenced by another soldier who grips her arm tightly. We're trapped, outnumbered and overpowered with no way to escape. My mind races for a solution, any glimmer of hope that might save us from this nightmare and then I start to feel it. My magic finally stirs. Chapter 19 Julius The Minotaurs close in, their eyes gleaming with cruel intent. I scream, trying to rush to Savannah in a desperate attempt to protect her. The Minotaurs holding me back just chuckle. Run! The word tears from my throat as I lunge toward her. She doesn't move, though. But then I see it, her hand raised, fingers splayed. Magic crackles at her fingertips, a fierce glow lighting up her determined face. My heart pounds. She's not running. She's standing her ground. A minotaur lunges at us, axe raised high. Savannah's magic pulses, 
a burst of light enveloping the creature and sending it crashing to the ground. Savannah! My voice is a mix of awe and terror. She glances at me, a mixture of defiance and desperation in her eyes. I'm letting them hurt us. Another minotaur approaches and swings its weapon, but before it can connect, Savannah's magic flares again, the air shimmering with raw power. I watch as she holds off our attackers, her magic dancing around us like a protective barrier. For a moment, all I can do is stare. We need to get out of here, she pants as her magic hits one of the minotaur holding me. I use the distraction to shove the other one off, sweeping his legs and I lunge at Ronica's captor. With my help, she yanks away and then I leap off the creature, running as soon as I hit the ground. Savannah and Ronica are right on my heels. As we reach the edge of the fray, I steal another glance at Savannah. Her face is set with fierce determination, but I can see the strain in her eyes. We stumble into a narrow alleyway and collapse against the wall, breathless. The sounds of battle fade behind us. I didn't know you could do that, I manage between gasps for air. Savannah looks at me with wide eyes. I... But before she gets a word out, we hear shouts. We don't have a moment to rest. We can talk about it later. Let's go, I say just as two of the hairy beasts turn into the alleyway. I charge in the opposite direction, heart pounding, every muscle in my body straining. The monitors continue to close in, eyes dark and merciless. Savannah runs briefly and then comes to a sudden halt, still as a statue. She doesn't move. My gut twists in fear. Now is not the time to be a hero. Why aren't you running anymore? I shout again, more desperately this time. But something's off. Her eyes turn a menacing shade darker, and she raises both her hands. What is she doing? Going rogue. Her eyes focus on the pack of minotaurs, and her fingers tremble as if she's grasping something invisible. Her face is a mask of concentration and determination. Savannah! I bellow, reaching out to grab her arm, but the air around us shimmers. I can do this, Julius! Just watch out! She yells. A blast of energy erupts from Savannah's palms. The force throws the minotaurs back, sending them sprawling. Their heavy bodies hit the ground with a sickening thud. Savannah's breathing hard, sweat trickling down her forehead. She looks at me, eyes wide with a mix of fear and accomplishment. I get it. You're a badass, but let's not push it, I manage to say, though my mind races with questions and worries. But there's no time for that now. The minotaurs only seem to multiply, their roars filling the air. I grab Savannah's hand, breaking her from her reverie. We have to leave here, Savannah. There will be plenty of time to prove ourselves later. She nods, gripping my hand tightly as we turn and run together further into the darkness. We continue to sprint through the chaos, my heart hammering in my chest. We dodge between stalls and leap over crates, but the minotaurs are relentless. Rasden's traitorous voice booms behind us, shouting orders to his kin. Julius, watch out! Savannah's warning comes a second too late. A heavy hand grabs my shoulder, spinning me around. Rasden's face looms close, his green eyes filled with regret and determination. I'm sorry, he says his grip tightening. Before I can react, a surge of energy pulses through the air. Savannah's magic flares out in a desperate attempt to free me from Rasden's grasp. Her eyes widen in horror as the energy strikes me instead of our attacker. The world explodes in a blinding flash of light. My body seizes up, every nerve igniting with pain. I feel Savannah's magic coursing through me, wild and untamed. Rasden raises his hand just as it erupts, his magic slamming into her. Debris flies everywhere, wooden planks and metal fragments scattering like deadly confetti. My vision blurs, the world spinning. Savannah's voice reaches me through the chaos, filled with panic and desperation. Julius! Julius! I try to respond, but my throat feels raw, my voice swallowed by the roaring in my ears. The ground beneath me trembles the air thick with dust and magic residue. Savannah! My voice cracks as the force hits me hard. Light soon engulfs us all, then an explosion erupts around me, heat searing my skin. 
and then nothing but complete darkness. The world shatters around me. Everything is a swirl of colors and pain. Muscles wrench apart, like I'm being torn from the inside out. It's like my body rebels against itself, every nerve on fire. I thought the first part of her strike was bad, but this aftershock doesn't hold a candle to that. I can't tell if I'm dying or just wishing for it. Savannah's magic continues to pulse through me, raw and uncontrolled. It's like nothing I've ever felt, like lightning under my skin, searing every vein. My chest tightens, breath coming in ragged gasps. Then without warning, my back slams into the ground. The impact knocks the air from my lungs. Pain explodes in my spine and radiates outward. My limbs feel heavy, unresponsive. Darkness edges in on my vision, and I struggle to hold on to consciousness. The sounds of battle fade, replaced by a high-pitched ringing that drowns everything else out. I can't see. Can't move. Savannah's voice calls out to me through the haze, but it's distant, muffled. Panic rises within me, but there's nothing I can do. I swear the last thing I hear is her cries of agony and declaration of her love for me, but then again that could be my mind playing tricks on me. The darkness wins. I succumb to the pain. I black out. If someone had told me a month ago that I would be running for my life instead of sitting in the stuffy classroom of the bordello, preparing to be sold off to Indoor, I would have laughed. The forest is not your safe space, little one. But there's no avoiding my fate. It's you. You're the one. I've spent my entire life training to be the perfect bride for the top bidding Dark Elf. So much can change in so little time. You understand why you're being punished, right, child? Your blood sings to me. Please, let me out of here. You need to learn your place. But what are you? Where are you taking me? Run! I'm a bringer of death. No, no, you're not dying. I won't let you. You won't be able to get out. Let me go, please. Sadie, I will make you mine. Chapter 20 Savannah A sharp pain throbs in my temple as I groggily open my eyes. My vision swims, blurry shapes coming into focus. I push myself up on shaky arms, willing away the nausea and trying to clear the fog from my mind. My body feels like it's been repeatedly kicked by an equu. Every muscle aches, and even breathing takes effort. The magic I conjured drained me more than I realised. It's like I siphoned energy from my own life force. I sink to the floor, my legs trembling too much to support me. Rough stone digs into my skin, but I barely notice. My mind races with thoughts of trying to remember what happened, but my body has other ideas, complete and utter exhaustion. My hands shake as I lift them, the faint glow of residual magic still visible in my fingertips. They feel numb, as if I've held onto something too tight for too long. It's not just physical tiredness. It's a bone-deep weariness that seeps into every fibre of my being. Cool air brushes against my skin, and I look up to take in my surroundings. I'm in some sort of a cave. I make a feeble attempt to orient myself to reality, and when I finally do, it's then I realise I'm all alone. Panic seizes me and my heart races. Wait, where is everyone? The scenery starts to register more clearly now as I rub my tired eyes. The jagged rocks aren't familiar, neither is the shape of this cave entrance or the pattern of moss clinging to its sides. One thing is for certain, this definitely isn't where I was before. I force myself to try and remember what happened prior to this. It would probably be a lot easier to formulate logical thought if my head didn't feel like it's been through war. Wait, war, the Minotaurs, Razdan's betrayal, the explosion of magic. My chest tightens as the memories flood back. The realisation hits like ice water down my spine. Panic teleporting. It must be. In my fear for Julius's life, 
I somehow transported us both somewhere else entirely, without even realising it. My fear for Julius's life. My heart suddenly seizes. Oh no, Julius! I bellow into the nothingness. I stagger to my feet, the ground tilting beneath me. I swallow back the bile that forms in my throat as I steady myself against the cave wall, its rough surface biting into my palm. Julius, are you here? Though my voice is weak, it echoes through the cavern, but only silence answers. My breaths come in short gasps as I look out of the mouth of the cave, eyes scanning for any sign of anything, anyone. The marketplace scene plays in my mind on repeat, Rasdin lunging for Julius, dark magic swirling around them. No, 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 no. Julius! I scream again, desperation clawing at my throat. A memory suddenly flashes behind my eyes. Julius's face, contorted in agony, his eyes dull and lifeless. The black veins that had crept up his arms seemed to pulse with a sinister energy. For a moment, it looked like he was... dying. The image won't leave my mind. His ashen skin, the way his body had gone limp, like a puppet with its strings cut. My heart clenches at the thought. What if I killed him? What if my ignorance in controlling my magic cost me the man I love? That's something I can't bear to imagine. No, I can't think like that. Julius is strong, the strongest person I know. He can't die. Not by my hand. I would never forgive myself. I begin pacing, panic climbing its way up my chest. Wait, where are Ranica and Rasdin? The last thing I remember is Rasdin lunging at Julius, dark magic swirling around them. And then, nothing. A blank void in my memory. I glance around the cave, its shadows offering no answers. Panic gnaws at me as I think about Ranica in her already vulnerable state. Did she escape? Or is she lying somewhere injured or worse? And Rasdin? The thought of his betrayal sends a shiver down my spine. How could he? Why didn't the Minotaurs just take me? It's a question that hangs in the air, unanswered and unsettling. My fingers brush against the cave walls, feeling its cold, rough texture, as if it might ground me in reality. I continue to stand and pace the cave's narrow confines, trying to make sense of it all. Each step echoes softly off the stone walls, a lonely sound that amplifies my isolation. Think, Savannah. There has to be an explanation. My thoughts swirl like a storm inside my head. If Rasdin wanted to harm us, why not take both of us? Did something, or someone, intervene? Frustration bubbles up inside me as I realise how little I know about what truly happened. My magic had flared uncontrollably during the chaos. Maybe it played a part in our escape. The cave's entrance looms ahead, a dark moor that offers no clues. I step outside, eyes scanning the unfamiliar landscape. Tall, jagged cliffs rise on either side, and the sound of distant waves crashing against rocks reaches my ears. Wherever I am, it's isolated, far from any town or marketplace. I need answers, but first, I need to ensure Julius's safety. I can't stay here and do nothing. I have to find my way back to him. Taking a deep breath, I step forward, looking towards the horizon for any signs of civilization. My heart sinks as I see nothing. I was hoping at least for some sort of a mirage to ease my anxiety. Panic bubbles up inside me again but I force it down. Now isn't the time to lose control. I need to be strong, focused. I have to get back to Julius. I have to ensure that he's okay. I take one last deep breath before leaving the cave behind me in the distance, hoping that I'll find someone, anyone, who can help me. Chapter 21 Julius Sharp, searing pain yanks me from the abyss of unconsciousness. Every muscle protests as I try to move, and my vision swims. Gritting my teeth, I force myself to breathe through the agony. Memories violently crash into me. Savannah's magic flaring, Rasdin's betrayal, and that blinding explosion. Panic claws at my chest. What the... 
My voice is a rasp, barely audible. The ceiling above me drips with moisture, each droplet echoing like a hammer to my aching head. I blink several times, forcing my eyes to focus. Darkness envelops me, broken only by the faint glimmer of sunlight through the cracks. The air is damp, thick with the earthy scent of moss and decay. Where? I repeat, more insistent this time. My voice reverberates through the cave, sounding hollow and distant. I push myself up on shaky arms, my muscles screaming in protest. A wave of nausea crashes over me, but I force it down. I take in my surroundings. Jagged rocks jut out from the uneven ground, forming treacherous paths and shadowy crevices. The walls are cold to the touch, slick with condensation. This place feels ancient, untouched by time or light. It's as if I've been swallowed by the earth itself. The ground beneath me feels cold and unforgiving. I struggle to lift my head but manage only to turn it slightly. Savannah's face flashes before my eyes. The thought of her sends a jolt of urgency through me. I remember her determined expression as she fought beside me, and her crumbling face as she realized she missed her mark and got me instead. Did she make it out? Where is she? Is she safe? I try to conjure a flame to light my way, but only a feeble spark flickers before dying out. Frustration wells up inside me, mingling with fear. Hello? My voice trembles slightly, betraying the dread gnawing at my gut. Silence answers me. I push against the ground, trying to sit up. Pain screams through my body, and I collapse back with a groan. The inky black veins on my arms pulse ominously. My magic. It's almost gone. But that doesn't matter now. Savannah does. Think. Julius, I mutter through clenched teeth. I recall Rasdin's grim face as he betrayed us, the shock on Savannah's face as her magic failed her. She must be out there somewhere, alone and scared. I need to find her. The distant sound of waves crashing reaches my ears, reminding me of the beach where we shared that fleeting moment of peace. I force myself to focus on the present. I have to get up. Using what little strength I have left, I roll onto my side and push myself onto all fours. Every movement sends fresh waves of agony through me, but I refuse to give in. Come on, I whisper harshly. With great effort, I manage to sit up and lean against a nearby rock for support. The world spins, but I grit my teeth and hold on. Savannah needs me. Please be safe, I murmur, closing my eyes for a moment. Determination steals my resolve. I can't stay here and wallow in pain. I need to find her, no matter what it takes. With trembling hands, I grip the rock and pull myself up on my knees. I waver, my visions nearly blacking out, but I refuse for my body to give up on me now. Hold on, Savannah, I vow quietly. I'm coming for you. A sudden shadow falls over me, blocking the dim light filtering through some unseen crack above. Julius! Rastin's voice rumbles like distant thunder. My eyes snap open fully now. He's leaning over me, his expression unreadable against the flickering torchlight reflecting off damp stone walls. Where am I? My voice sounds weak and angry, even to my own ears. I'm not... sure, Rastin answers. It only fuels my anger. My muscles tremble with effort as I try to sit up straighter, but I collapse back against the cold stone wall. The pain is excruciating, but my rage pushes me to speak. You! You're a traitorous beast! I manage to hiss, my voice a broken rasp. Why did you do to this to us? Rastin's eyes flicker with something. Pity? Regret? It only makes me angrier. I did what I had to, he says quietly. To save you. Save me? My laugh comes out as a painful wheeze. You call this saving? Savannah. Where is she? I don't know, Rastin replies. I got sucked in here with you. I try to summon the strength for another outburst, but my body betrays me. My vision blurs, and I feel myself slipping back toward unconsciousness. I grit my teeth, forcing myself to stay awake. You... bastard! 
I spit weakly. If anything happens to her... We'll get back, Rastin interrupts firmly. But you have to rest now. Rest? How can he expect me to rest when Savannah is out there, alone and possibly in danger? But my body gives me no choice. The darkness edges closer, and I fight it with everything I have left. You better hope you're right, I whisper, the last of my strength fading. Rasdin watches me with that unreadable expression as my eyelids grow heavy. The pain is still there, gnawing at every part of me, but exhaustion pulls me under. I've lost count of how many times I've managed to drift in and out of consciousness, my body too weak to fight the relentless pain. The bright side being, I'm not dead. I hear Rasdin's voice echoing through the fog, but his words are lost on me. Each time I come to, the stone walls of the Minotaur tunnels loom around me, a constant reminder of my captivity. Julius, you need to eat, Rasdin says during one of my brief moments of clarity. I manage to turn my head toward him. He holds a bowl of some steaming concoction, its earthy aroma filling the air. My stomach churns at the thought of food but I know I need strength. You probably poisoned it, I say with a sneer to Rasdin. No, Julius, I know it seems. Just leave it, I croak as I cut him off. I'm not in the mood to hear his excuses or explanations. Rasdin places the bowl beside me and steps back, watching with those inscrutable eyes. His presence grates on my nerves, but I lack the energy to argue. My limbs feel like lead and every breath is a struggle. Time starts to lose its meaning the longer I'm stuck here. Sometimes I hear Rasdin muttering to himself or pacing the chamber. Other times I think I hear Savannah, and what little energy I have urges me to lift up and look for her, but I'm only met with an empty cave. Yet most of the time, silence envelops me, broken only by the distant sound of water dripping from the tunnel ceiling. I lower my head, defeated. And I catch a glimpse of those inky black veins snaking back up my arms. Panic surges through me again, but it quickly fades into resignation. I can't afford to dwell on my failing magic, not when Savannah is still out there. The darkness edges closer once more, and this time I don't fight it. Instead, I let it wash over me, carrying me away from the pain and worry for a while longer. A single thought remains. Savannah needs me strong. For her sake, I must endure this torment and recover, no matter how impossible it seems now. A stabbing pain shoots through me, and I force my eyes open, blinking against the dim light of the torch. Rasdin stands nearby, his massive form casting long shadows on the stone walls. He watches me, but his expression remains unreadable. I need... to find her, I mutter through clenched teeth. You will, Rastin assures me, his voice gentler than before. But first, you must heal, Julius. You'll be of no worth to her if you're unable to even defend yourself. My vision blurs again and I fight to stay conscious. Every fiber of my being screams at me to give in, to let the darkness take over. But I can't. Savannah needs me. The effort to stay awake becomes unbearable, and despite my best efforts, the darkness edges closer once more. She has to be okay. The words slip from my lips as consciousness fades again. The thought of her suffering brings me agony. The chance I may never see her again eats me alive. In the final moments before oblivion takes over, one thought remains. I must find her. And then there is nothing but darkness. Rosenfire, our family holds great weight and power in Orthani, and yet I hear whispers. Do you think he can take him? There is no way that this could happen. No more books. I can't remain locked in this ivory tower a moment longer. She's perfect. The Baron's daughter must be found. Julius, we shouldn't. Why shouldn't we? I am not a full dark elf. I do not possess their ethereal beauty. How will I find a mate? The lowly barren son 
apparently has shown that he has the same gift of fire wielding as I, if not stronger. I am the family's dirty little secret. I am not the future of the family. Dukan is. This world was created from a seed of evil. I propose we take Dukan out of the picture. Permanently. Please, let me go. If you want to join the poor humans who are bought and sold in the markets on a daily basis, you will find a way to get there. I am free, and I am terrified. You will never escape me. I can try. You will fail. Get seasons one and two of the Dark Elf series from worldsofprothika.com. Prothika's magic is eternal. This series will show you why.